Confederate Lieutenant General James Longstreet took command of the Department of Virginia and North Carolina in February 1863 and launched his Tidewater operations. That plan included protecting Richmond and Lee's Army of Northern Virginia, retaking coastal forts and territory, and gathering supplies and men. The operations in coastal North Carolina led by Major General D.H. Hill were tied to efforts in southeastern Virginia aimed at putting Union forces on the defensive. On March 13, 1863, Major General Daniel H. Hill advanced to attack New Bern with approximately 12,000 Confederate troops. Major General John G. Foster, the Union commander, held the town with greatly reduced force as he had sent troops to operations in South Carolina. Hill's attack on New Bern involved an infantry assault from the southwest, a cavalry advance to cut the railroad line and isolate the federal garrison, and heavy cannon fire from the north. As part of the operations, Brigadier General James J. Pettigrew had to move about 3,000 men some 60 miles from Goldsboro to Fort Anderson in heavy rains along muddy roads. Fort Anderson is a Union constructed earthwork that was named in honor of Lieutenant Colonel Hiram Anderson who commanded the garrison. The approximate dimensions were 15 feet tall, protected in front by a ditch of 8 feet deep by 12 feet wide, and along with its natural, strong natural fortifications and prominence out into the Noose River, made it nigh impossible for anyone to slip past unnoticed. Fort Anderson was defended by the 92nd New York Infantry Regiment and was home to some 200 to 300 men. On the afternoon of March 13th, North Carolinians led by Brigadier General Junius Daniel overran a Union outpost at Deep Gully eight miles southwest of New Bern. While the Confederates had pushed the Federals from Deep Gully and held off for counterattack by three Massachusetts regiments, the Southerners failed to advance further. On the morning of the 14th, Pettigrew's cannons opened fire on the surprise defenders here at Fort Anderson and the protecting gunboats from the river. Despite heavy shelling, the Confederates were unable to get the defenders to surrender the fort or drive away the gunboats protecting from the river. With every tent riddled with holes, two of five horses dead, a handful of casualties, mishaps from the guarding gunships, and a slew of other unfortunate incidents, the Union forces were able to withstand the assault and prevail. Accordingly, Pettigrew was forced to abandon his assault and retire along the same route in which he had advanced. Because Pettigrew's success was essential to the operation, Hill had no choice but to withdraw. Despite his failure to recapture Newburn, Hill was able to seize unguarded food wagons from Union forces and suffered few casualties. He then launched a similar operation against Washington, North Carolina, two weeks later.